Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Today's video is gonna be a little different because I won't be talking about nice hydrating skincare ingredients or anti-aging products. It's gonna be about this case that's been pretty well known now. It went viral after a few people have talked about it. Another doctor did really well with his video, getting a lot of press time. The news outlets have really picked up the story because it involves an unfortunate case of a 19 year old college student in Massachusetts who had to have all 10 fingers part Parts of them amputated and also losing both legs below the knees had to be amputated. Why did this happen? A lot of these headlines are saying Chinese food did it, eating leftover food caused it and he developed fevers, abdominal pain and this crazy bruising rash. Very unfortunate case. It's just a tale of a perfect storm of events, risk factors coming together leading to this unfortunate event. And so me being a board certified dermatologist, I have seen this before in my training and residency at Harvard. When you're a Harvard dermatology resident, you cover all the Harvard hospitals, including Massachusetts General, Beth Israel, Deaconess Medical Center, Brigham and Women's, Boston Children's main hospitals under that umbrella. This case was published in the Mass General case files in the New England Journal of Medicine and me as a dermatology resident there, I was able to have two of my cases during my three years as a dermatology resident. You do one year of internal medicine, then three years of dermatology. During my three years of dermatology, I was able to have two of my cases published in the New England Journal, quite fascinating on the rare side, really good learning cases for other doctors. So this was published in the New England Journal. And so it's public knowledge. I'm not the physician who took care of this patient. I just want to explain things, what happened and how do we get this bruising rash with this condition. Real quick background, college student, 19 year old, comes home, maybe his friend's house, I'm not too sure, opens up the fridge, gets some leftover food that his friend or roommate had purchased the night before from a local restaurant consisting of rice, chicken, lo mein, ate it, shortly after felt very sick, brought him down to his knees, abdominal pain, just really severe abdominal pain, developed fevers and then eventually started getting bruising on his body and his arms. It rapidly progressed. He came to the hospital very, very sick. He had a high fever, had blood cultures taken. At first was breathing very quickly. That led to him being intubated on a ventilator. And then he developed kidney failure where he was not urinating well because his whole body was just shutting down from multi-organ failure. He had systemic inflammation or SIRS. He just had inflammation throughout his whole body where it was consuming his clotting factors, having abnormal clotting where he was having extra clotting, clotting off blood vessels. So the blood vessels in his skin were being clotted off leading to bruising. That is called purpura fulminans. The blood cultures ended up being positive. They grew out a bacteria called Neisseria meningitidis. So you guys have heard of meningitis, meningococcemia, meningococcal. That's a bacteria that can cause meningitis or inflammation involving the lining of the brain on your spinal cord. And so this poor guy coming in with just full body inflammation all throughout at a very high risk or high likelihood of dying from what's going on. Purpura fulminans typically moves very quickly like in this case and it's very life-threatening. A lot of people die from this. I've seen people die from this. What's going on? Why do we have purpura or bruising all over the body? Why did it lead to him losing his digits and getting both legs amputated? So purpura fulminans involves clotting like we talked about. Imagine, so this is the top layer of your skin and you have a trunk of blood vessels that come up to the surface of the skin and opens up into like a tree with different different branches, different blood vessels feeding your skin. And if you look at it from the top, that's how it looks, kind of like a branch of blood vessels. Now, if I clotted off this branch here, the main source of blood flowing to the skin, it will cause insufficient flow of blood to your skin, leading to the death of your skin wherever this feeds. And if you look at it from the top, that's gonna die in a star-like pattern. And that's where you see the pictures of this gentleman. His rash was described as reticulate, very angulated, well demarcated, really sharp edges, star-like. And that's what's going on is that you're just having all of your blood vessels being clotted off, leading to the death in your skin from insufficient blood flow. And at the top, if you're looking at it, it's a star. It's a star shape. And that could be from your body making too much clot, which happened in him. You could have bacteria, a whole ball of bacteria in the blood vessel causing that. You have to treat it quickly with like fresh frozen plasma and clotting factors replenishing that quickly to help save his life. Unfortunately, his limbs became necrotic. They were very dusky. They eventually had to get them amputated below the knees, both legs below the knees, amputations, and then also all 10 digits.
digits had to be partially amputated as well. Very unfortunate for such a young guy to go through this. The whole part of this that I wanted to clear up is that, is this from the leftovers truly? I've seen a lot of headlines of saying Chinese food caused this, you know, trying to get you to click on it, like Chinese food caused the young college student to lose his limbs. I would take that with a grain of salt. I wouldn't jump to conclusions. If you were to say that it's common for one to get this condition from eating bad leftovers that weren't heated properly or weren't were left out for too long. No, this is not a common thing, especially with this bacteria. Neisseria meningitidis is typically something you see from human to human contact, saliva transfer. When I went to college, I had to get fully vaccinated against meningococcal infections. You get that two part series of immunization shots. And because you're living in close quarters, I lived in the dormitories. And so having dorm life, there were cases of people getting meningitis from this bacteria. So we got vaccinated against it. He was high risk just being a college student. Him not being fully vaccinated, perhaps it was just more of a severe case. You could argue that maybe there was a chance that the roommate who ate the food the night before was a carrier of the bacteria because supposedly it can live in the back of your throat. And I did read that the roommate was fully vaccinated against meningococcal infections. And so maybe he was an asymptomatic carrier. He ate the food. His saliva was on the food. He did throw up the night before, but obviously he didn't end up like his friend or the patient. Maybe he had the bacteria in the food and then the friend consumed it, but it was just too sudden. It was so quick that he got sick so soon after that it would be pretty rare for you just to contract it GI wise through through food being foodborne illness not classic for Neisseria meningitis to be in food and also it does have an incubation period before it does some damage and so I'd say I don't like those headlines I think it's demonizing Chinese food we've already had this whole MSG discussion before it's been demonized so many times in the past I don't like it so I just want to use my platform here to discuss my thoughts as a physician but also a dermatologist of what's going on here I am proud to say that I, I did do my residency at this hospital. I did cover this hospital. I was able to get published in this series in the New England Journal of Medicine. One case being for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma of HTLV-1 infection at Mass General and also for a patient who came in with bruising all over and we found to have uh, multiple myeloma but just presented with bruising and heart failure. And that's called amyloidosis uh, secondary to multiple myeloma. So very uh, interesting cases, very sick patients though. So unfortunately, we have to learn as doctors from each other through these unfortunate events. I'm sorry if these pictures are graphic. It was good to see that he did survive, although quality of life-wise, we'll see how he recovers. He was able to come off a of hemodialysis, so it's great that his kidneys did recover. In terms of foodborne illnesses, just always be careful of not leaving your food out and also reheating properly as well before eating leftovers. But you know what? I'm going to eat leftovers tonight, and I'm not going to go being afraid of Chinese food either. So eat up, guys. Be safe, though, with leftovers. You know, in terms of fried rice, there's a bacteria called B. serious that can cause a GI illness by having the bacteria grow on your fried rice if you leave it out for too long. Us people from Hawaii, we know we love our fried rice, but just be careful of that. Put it in the refrigerator real quick after you're done eating it, then heat it up well the next day. Uh, all right, guys. So just a quick little video about this. I hope you guys are all well. Thank you all for your support. And I hope this video was informative in some way. I'll go back to talking about skincare very soon. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.